day 435 of the Trump administration. And as another week comes to an end, there is a new figure at the center of the latest development tonight in the Russia matter. Our NBC News investigative unit reports earlier this week, Mueller's investigators detained, questioned, and then served a subpoena to a Trump ally named Ted Malik when he arrived at Boston's Logan Airport from his home in England. Malik is an American. He's a Trump ally, informal advisor who has just finished a book called The Plot to Destroy Trump, How the Deep State Fabricated the Russian Dossier to Subvert the President. He's also a Brexit supporter with ties to the British leader of that movement, Nigel Farage. In 2016, just days after the election, Malik spoke with the BBC about Donald Trump. I've been involved in the campaign for over a year and a half. Yeah. I think the media gets Trump wrong almost constantly. So I think when it's all said and done, if we're sitting here eight years from now, the world will be a safer and a better place. The economy would have grown and we would have rebuilt American infrastructure. That's what Trump will be known. I mean, I think that there will be a very interesting relationship between Russia and the United States now, between Putin and Trump as, as a powerful world leaders. Whether it's a bromance, I think is to be decided, but I, I think that we'll be in a much healthier situation. Well, he got part of that right. It's an interesting relationship, at least. Fast forward to his encounter this week at Logan up in Boston with the FBI. According to a statement that Malik emailed to NBC News, we'll quote here, two FBI agents told him he was being detained to answer questions related to the special counsel's investigation. He said they told him it was a felony to lie to the FBI, and he told them he would gladly cooperate. According to Malik, the agents also produced a document allowing them to seize and search his cell phone. Malik added, quote, the questions got more detailed about my involvement in the Trump campaign, which was informal and unpaid, whom I communicated with, whom I knew and how well. Malik said they asked him about former Trump campaign advisor Roger Stone, author Jerome Corsi and WikiLeaks. Malik said he told them he met with Stone a, a total of three times and always with groups of people. He said he was asked if he had ever visited the Ecuadorian embassy in London, where WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange has been living since 2012, and he replied no. Malik also said the agent served him a subpoena from Mueller's team that had been issued that day, March 28, to appear for questioning on April 13th. Earlier on this network, former federal prosecutor Harry Littman put this latest development into context. It's this breathless kind of uh, new development that shows, you know, Mueller's not thinking about the red line, the blue line, the yellow line. He's just thinking about the finish line and plumbing the depths of everything that is involved here, I'm sure to Trump's great uh, chagrin. We're back in Tom Clancy territory with a very rich, complicated brew centering around the uh, 2016 release of the WikiLeaks documents. And just to recap here on a Friday night, what we've learned on the Russia front as we close out another week, it was reported that John Dowd, President Trump's former lead lawyer in this Russia case, spoke last summer with lawyers for Michael Flynn and Paul Manafort about the possibility of presidential pardons. We learned from a court filing one time Trump campaign aide Rick Gates was in contact during the 16 campaign with a business associate tied to Russian intelligence. And it's being reported that Mueller's asking questions about contacts between the Trump team and Russians out of all places, the Cleveland 2016 Republican National Convention. And the president's legal team got smaller this week just as it was about to get larger by two. Attorneys Joe DeGeneva and his wife Victoria Tenzing backed out after saying they would represent the president. In exiting, they cited conflicts as the reason. The two are also representing an important witness in the Mueller investigation, former spokesman for Trump's legal team named Mark Corallo. It's a lot. And for more, we turn to our leadoff panel on a Friday night. Matt Apuzzo, a Pulitzer Prize winner, a New York Times reporter and MSNBC contributor. Tamara Keith, White House correspondent for NPR. Matthew Nussbaum, White House reporter for Politico. Well, good evening and welcome all three of you. Matt Apuzzo, 
It's a hell of a thing, I'm tempted to say on Holy Week, the terrible swift sword of the federal government. When feds act, when you witness it, it is striking to watch. I can't imagine what it's like to be the guy surrounded at Logan, your phone is taken, what it's like to be the folks in that concourse who watch this go down. But we, uh, it's, it's never uninteresting uh, around the Mueller investigation. No, that's right. And uh, the power of the federal government is very much on display here. Look, I think what, what all these developments this week show, at least for me, is uh, that the question of collusion or conspiracy or whatever we want to call it is still very much in play as far as Bob Mueller's concerned. I mean, he's asking about essentially contacts between or potential contacts between the Trump campaign and a WikiLeaks, which obviously we know was the, the vehicle that was used to uh, disseminate those uh, hacked emails related to the DNC and the Hillary Clinton campaign. Uh, the fact that he's asking about that still, I mean, we're, we're going on one year in, tells me he has absolutely not foreclosed the idea of uh, the of collusion or conspiracy between the Trump campaign and Russian intelligence operatives. Uh, so that is very much a live issue, even as the, the Republicans on Capitol Hill are saying it's over and done with. No, we've got no evidence of collusion. He's asking questions. And let's not forget Roger Stone, that uh, Trump advisor, campaign advisor. We know he was in contact with the Twitter uh, account that was run by Guccifer 2.0, which was a front for Russian intelligence operatives to uh, disseminate hacked emails. So this is, uh, this is live. The, uh, the question of collusion is still very much live. And Tamara, as is the case with film directors, I don't imagine Mueller is going uh, in order. Uh, I think he's shooting out of sequence. And when you think about it, Papadopoulos, uh, uh, Flynn, Gates cooperating, this tangent brings us back to the campaign era, along with some other developments this week. Yes, so we're we're back in the campaign, and you know if he if they are in fact asking about Julian Assange, that does go back to that intelligence assessment that came out more than a year ago that that said you know WikiLeaks was a, you know a venue to get these hacked emails out to the public via Russia, uh, and. And so, as Matt said, the, the, this is this is a live issue. This is ongoing, and uh, and I, I think the challenging thing with uh, with any one witness that you learn about or or any of these these little pieces is that we don't see the whole picture. Uh, and Mueller's team does, uh, and and we don't. Uh, and so it, it's it, it can be hazardous to read too much into any one data point along the way. And Tamara, as you and I have discussed, we see actually so little. And everyone who's had any contact with Mueller on either side of the ball comes away saying he has everything. They have everything. Yeah. All right. Uh, Matthew Nussbaum. Uh, we keep reading these accounts that the president is more comfortable in the job, but this White House now, the president's in Florida, what could go wrong? The White House is functioning without a comms director with a, let's say, uh, if press accounts are correct, a diminished chief of staff. Where is strategy going to emerge? Uh, I think that's really hard to say. I think they were happy just to make it to this uh, weekend, this holiday weekend. The president and the vice president are both out of town on vacation. Uh, and like you said, what we're seeing from a lot of these staffing moves is that President Donald Trump is feeling a lot more comfortable to put together the team he wants. I think he's feeling a little bit emboldened. Um, and and the, the main thing to watch, I think, within the White House has been the departure of Hope Hicks. Uh, she was someone who, who was seen as... The, could talk to the president, uh, had a relationship with him that almost no one else had, and could sort of tamp down some of these uh, more reckless impulses and ten tendencies that he had. And there's real concern in the White House that with her departure, um, he might be even more off message than we've seen in the past. Go ahead and couple that with John Dowd leaving, uh, someone who had, who had urged cooperation with the Mueller team. Uh, and, and I think you see a president who, who's more and more emboldened to maybe push back publicly on this investigation, which everyone else in the <clears throat> White House knows is not a good move. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.